Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Chris and this is Regular Guy Training and this is going to be a very short everything that you need to get started video for night vision because I'm tired of people talking entirely too much and shit that doesn't matter to you at all. So this is going to go straight into what can get you started and it can it can get you started pretty well. Now there's a couple of things to emphasize. One thing I, I really, this is like investment territory so you want warranties on this on like everything. So stuff that falls off a truck and shit like that, I personally don't go after, especially because I plan on actually training with the, with the stuff instead of, you know, letting it hang out in my closet forever. So here's the thing, right? The old Rhino 2s, okay, the from Norotos, the Rhino 2s, look, these work just fine if they're brand new. They can get pretty tight and they don't add like shit loads of wiggle. Um, it is a friction defeat system. So once the damn thing is hooked up to your helmet, it can be pretty solid if you didn't get one from some fucking random cage someplace, okay? Uh, it's a friction defeat, so the only wiggle that you do get is between, is between not defeated and defeated. So just make sure that your stuff is set and you're in good shape. Uh, you can also upgrade this to a dovetail type setup rather than a bayonet uh, type setup, and we'll get into that here in just a second. Uh, as far as the helmet goes, just make sure you got a good suspension system, good air protection on, and that kind of stuff. If you have a mic and you end up having to shoot switch, just make sure that the mic is down, otherwise this comes unsealed. Okay, counterbalances and all that stuff you want, especially since, uh, unless you're a soldiering type or something similar, uh, I won't recommend ballistic helmets because you just don't really need them. You need a hat for all your crap. I would recommend a bump helmet, throw on some extra counterbalance weight, you're in, you're in good shape. Easy. Next thing, I'm going to go to the actual night vision device. Okay, these, the J-Arms, right? These guys, yeah, they have a reputation for being kind of fragile, but there's a couple of things to note. Um, if you're putting them on, doing doing the kind of work that you want to do, and that kind of thing. Uh, once they screw in, again, if it's a new one, okay, rather than some beat-to-hell J-Arm that was stolen out of a friggin' uh, cage someplace, okay, they can be pretty solid if they're new. I would suggest getting two, they're like $90 a piece. When you go to drop or pull up your nod, okay, especially with a setup like this that's got a J-arm reputation in the way that it does, move the mount, not the optic, and you won't put extra stress on the arm. It'll help preserve the life of that arm for a little, for a little while, okay. Yes, they do break, but it's only if people try to do the Sam Fisher halfway cocked on the freaking mounts, and that's how and that's how shit breaks. Uh, easily, anyway. Um, after that, you got to take a pretty good like slap in order for them to break, which is why you buy two. And again, this is just to get you started. The tube itself, okay. You got one of two options: either you can go thin film or no film. Um, you know, the L3 with no film is is the better piece. It's the, for instance, the just the better I can see clearer white phosphorus tube that's out there. Uh, the reason why I'm going to recommend a thin film Elbit is it's over $1,000 cheaper, A, and two, the difference in quality and how you can see is between like 720p and 1080 is like the best possible comparison that I can give you. Um, and if I compare it one-to-one -one or side-by-side, -side, it's not that big of a deal, especially if you've done a bunch of training in the dark before. And that's what I'm going to emphasize is getting a bunch of training in the dark after you have this stuff. Don't just drop it and be like, ooh, ah, stars, I can fight in the dark now. Now, onto the rifle and sighting systems and everything else. Uh, you don't want a fixed rear because if you have to shoot passive, the thing in front of your face is going to obscure this. This isn't really that much of a big deal because it's it more or less, once you have your shit focused for down there, it sort of like goes away. But if you have something right in front of the of the night vision device that's right here, it's going to really, really impede a lot of your vision going forward. So you want to flip down. I don't really care where you get it from. It's fine. Now, the optic. Me personally, okay, this is where I start becoming a little bit of a Nazi on this, I guess. And that is, okay, you want Aimpoint or EOTech really only. The glass clarity from... Uh, my minimum is the Aimpoint Comp M4, but if you got to go as low as you need to go... Um, a pro or better, right, for seeing in the dark. How much flexibility that you want really depends on your air quotes mission set and that kind of thing, but the glass clarity for when you want to shoot passive, it, it has to be there. And something like hollow sun or primary arms or whatever, it's not going to be there, okay? You don't want tight circles, busy reticles, that kind of stuff, which is why EOTech is nice because it's got a nice huge 60 plus minute 
of angle circle around the one minute dot that does help out a lot or just to pinprick a light out front of you that's going to help the most uh, as far as this is concerned look if you do a bunch of training with this kind of shit uh, warranties start becoming a real deal okay um, what i'm going to recommend you start this so far is either like a pec 2 like a like a steiner d-ball something or a holosun ls321 now i am personally use this for a little while but i've watched these lasers with multiple students that actually do do training for going on a, a bunch of years right now these guys have been in the game doing lasers and stuff quite longer than a lot of people realize and you know something for instance, my buddy Colton who lives in Montana, he has one of these that lives on one of his guns. He uses it all the time in Montana cold. And that's something I'm going to bring up is, you know, it, it's gone on, done well and that kind of stuff. I just left this shit out in the, in the friggin' rain with the, with everything exposed, just left it in the rain hard as fuck all day. And, you know, as more time goes on, I'll do a particular review on this unit. But the point is, is that it's got the maximum uh, civilian legal outputs for, you know, you know, laser emitted stuff and it's easier to focus and it's built in my mind significantly better than something like a Steiner. Also Steiner's customer service sucks ass. So if I'm going to suggest a unit that you could throw on a gun, be done with it. And then if something breaks or whatever, uh, pretty easy to send back, have repaired or replaced, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go with hollow sun on that. Um, you know, and then, uh, and then of course you need some sort of white light that's hanging out, you know, on the side and that kind of deal. So, that is everything that you need to get this started, okay? We could talk about upgrades. We could talk about all kinds of shit going forward, but this is all that you need to get started. And if you're trained a bunch, if you have trained a bunch, it's significantly easier to figure out what upgrades you actually need instead of spending boat money on shit that you end up having to trade or sell or whatever later on. So, if you want to come out and train with us, if you want to check us out on Facebook... If you want to support us through Patreon or get $41 a month on Patreon, it gets you as much training as you want to. All the links for that are in the description below. And remember, guys, a regular guy's firearm is the last defense against tyranny. Easy.